Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about the self-categorization theory that explains how we categorize ourselves and others. Categorization is a cognitive process or actual implementation of grouping things based on one or more similarities. In our daily conversation, categorization is not explicitly distinguished from classification. However, in the field of organizational behavior, classification means any grouping, based on predefined and explicit criteria such as gender or nationality. On the other hand, categorization refers to grouping based on similarities, and grouping criteria are not predefined. Therefore, categorization is more dependent on our subjectivity, and the grouping criteria can emerge in the process of categorization. In psychology and its related fields, including organizational behavior, categorization is regarded as a cognitive process that serves to understand what something is by knowing what other things are equivalent to and what other things is different from. That is, categorization enables us to define ourselves and set boundary conditions that distinguish us from them. So, why do we categorize ourselves and others? One of the reasons is to reduce uncertainty. When we cannot characterize ourselves and others concisely, we have difficulty in understanding ourselves and others, resulting in a feeling of anxiety. Categorization reduces uncertainty by defining ourselves and others by the simplified concept. Moreover, in categorization, we group ourselves and others by simple criteria of similarity, enabling us to view the people around us in a simplified way. Besides, by categorization, we can position ourselves in a certain group of people. It gives us a sense of belongingness, which meets our basic needs of affiliation, and makes us feel a sense of security. We can form categories based on only a single feature, such as nationality. However, social categories can be based on multiple features. For instance, we sometimes categorize people based on their nationality as well as the culture of the nation. Social categorization refers to the categorization of people. As social categorization, we categorize ourselves and others into different groups. In other words, social categorization is to classify oneself and others. We engage in social categorization unconsciously or without intention, based on attributes shared by ourselves and those different from others. These attributes can be demographic characteristics, physical characteristics, personality, abilities, and other various features. That is, People categorize themselves and others based on both observable and non-observable features. According to Turner, social categorization occurs through a social comparison. That is, we compare some aspects of ourselves to other people for a better understanding of ourselves and others. In social comparison, we categorize ourselves and others by comparing salient stimuli which clearly characterize and differentiate ourselves and others. Through this process, we categorize people into in-group members and out-group members. As Turner proposed, in-group, out-group categorization is a product of meta-contrast. Specifically, people tend to categorize a collection of stimuli as a group when they perceive the intergroup differences in the stimuli are less than intergroup stimuli. So, if this ratio is greater than 1, we tend to form categories. Suppose you work in this team. The average age of the members is 40. And suppose I'm a member of another team. The average age is the same, 40. However, as the figure shows, age is more widely dispersed in my team. In such a case, you are likely to categorize your team as a middle-aged team. 
Two factors increase or decrease the impact of categorization on self-definition. They are accessibility and fit. Accessibility refers to the relative readiness of perceivers to use a particular category. Fit refers to the degree to which the social category is perceived as a reflection of real-world similarity and differences. Based on Brunner's theory, Oaks and colleagues show that social categories are salient and thus impactful when both accessibility and fit are high. Self-categorization is a particular type of social categorization. Turner defined self-categorization as cognitive groups of oneself and some class of stimuli as the same, in contrast to some other class of stimuli. Self-categorization can be classified into three levels by the degree of abstraction. They are personal identity, social identity, and human identity. Personal identity is the personal self-categorization based on the interpersonal comparison. Personal identity describes the self by personal attributes. It is an individual level categorization and the lowest abstraction level. Social identity is in-group, out-group categorization. Social identity describes the self by the group membership. It is a group level categorization with an intermediate level of abstraction. Human identity is a superordinate categorization with the highest level of abstraction. Human identity is human self-categorization that categorizes the self as human. The self-categorization theory explains how we categorize ourselves and others. Specifically, self-categorization theory explains how we form perceived in-groups and out-groups, that is, how we distinguish between us and them. A central concept in self-categorization is a prototype. A prototype is a fuzzy set of attributes that characterize and distinguish a group from other groups. It is a subjective description of attributes, not an objective measurement. A prototype consists of attributes that represents an exemplary member or ideal member of the group. Prototypes maximize the similarities within a group and the difference between groups. So, our self-categorization exaggerates the similarity between ourselves and others, and the difference between ourselves and others. Prototypes are defining and stereotypical attributes, but they are not necessarily stable. They can change in social interactions. So, the definitions of us and them are transitory. Thus, the boundary between us and them can change over time. According to self-categorization theory, both personal and social identities determine the self. Self-categorization is the process of cognitive grouping that is active, interpretative, and judgmental. The categories are not permanent, but it can change, depending on the change in the situation, context, or self. Two critical factors, salience and depersonalization, work in the self-categorization process. Salience is the strength of stimulus. When a social category is salient, people tend to perceive themselves as a member of a certain group, rather than as a unique individual. And when a certain social category becomes salient, people tend to cognitively assimilate themselves to in-group prototype. By doing so, people depersonalize themselves. We should know that the term depersonalization does not have negative connotations. Depersonalization here is a change in self-definition in a way that people come to define themselves according to the features of a certain group. Leonel Derry and Toll identify three types of self-categorization, in-group, out-group categorization, in-group-only categorization, 
and outgroup only categorization. In group outgroup categorization is also called intergroup categorization. In this type of categorization, meta contrast is observed for the perceiver's features and the other's features. Here, social categorization forms in group and out group categories, that is, us and them. In group only categorization is also called in group categorization. In this type of categorization, meta contrast is observed for the perceived features, but not the other's features. Here, perceivers identify other individuals as similar to themselves, but fail to identify others who are not similar to the perceiver as forming a category. So here, social categorization forms in-group only, that is, us only. Outgroup only categorization is also called outgroup categorization. In this type of categorization, meta contrast is observed for others' features without identifying the perceiver's features. Here, individuals perceived to be different from the perceiver are also perceived to share some similarity between them, and thus they are seen as an outgroup category. Those who are not in this category are not seen as sufficiently similar to each other to form a specific category. This type of categorization form only outgroup, that is, them only. The self-categorization theory is a theory of how we categorize ourselves and others. Social categories are often based on a prototype, a fuzzy set of attributes that characterize and distinguish a group from other groups. When a social category is salient, people are likely to perceive themselves as a member of a certain group rather than as a unique individual. And then, people depersonalize themselves, that is, they define themselves by the features of a specific group. Thank you for listening.